Good afternoon, respected Sorin ma'am. I am here to present the case on today's CPC. A 53-year-old Hindu married female housewife graduate resident of Jaipur presented with the following chief complaints. Involuntary perioral chewing movements, slurring of speech, abnormal finger movements in the right hand. She had it since 10 years which gradually increased. Patient initially mentioned about the perioral movements which was noticed first by her family members which was subtle in onset but gradually worsened and which uh, led to a self and a social stigma. She also consulted local practitioners for the same but got no relief. And then eventually she noticed abnormal movements in the right hand as well, which also worsened, hampered with her daily life. And uh, for same, she was referred to the SMS for further management and evaluation, describing the movements. The involuntary perioral chewing movements and the abnormal finger movements of the right hand were insidious since onset, constant, repetitive, purposeless, chewing movements with lip smacking, with intermediate opening and closing of jaw, initially started with episodes of short duration and gradually progressed to remain throughout the day, disappeared in sleep as observed by the family members, not altered by the eye closure, remains unaffected by voluntary movements, affected by emotion and excitement, not affected on approaching an object. Slurred speech, it was also insidious in onset, gradually progressive, this erratic type of speech with normal loudness, intonation normal, low pitch, able to read and understand words. On further probing, the patient also had a history of irritability and anger outbursts. Negative history, there was no history of any fall or loss of consciousness in the past. There was no history of weakness of upper and lower limbs and no facial deviation. No history of medication, seizure disorders, palpitation, weight loss, headache, vomiting or blurring of vision. Past history, she was a known case of type 2 DM along with hypertension. Uh, for type 2 DM, she has been taking glimipride and metformin for the last 6 years with good sugar control. For hypertension, she was taking telmisartan and emdodipine. And there was no history of surgery or hospitalization for any other chronic illness. Personal history, she was a non-smoker, non-alcoholic, strict vegetarian. Bowel and bladder habits were normal. There was normal sleep pattern. There was no history of similar illness found in the family members. Uh, going on to general physical examination, patient was conscious, cooperative and well-oriented to time, place and person, average build and nourished, pulse rate was 84 minutes, regular in rhythm, normal in character, normal volume, vessel wall, vessel wall not palpable, no radio radial or radio femoral delay was present, all peripheral pulses were well filled, BP was 130 by 80, mm of Hg in the right arm in supine position, respiratory rate was 16 per minute, her aqua abdominal, she was afebrile on touching. Head to toe examination, the hair is normal in color and texture, sclera was muddy, conjunctiva were pink and moist, nose there was no polyp, no septal deviation, no crusting, oral cavity, dentation present, oral hygiene good, though there were some abnormal perioral movements present which I will discuss in the further CNS assessment, there was no paler, icterus, cyanosis, clubbing, pedal edema or lymphadenopathy. Systemic examination, CNS, her higher mental function, she was conscious, alert and cooperative, Oriented to time, place and person, memory was intact, MMSC was 28 by 30, there was presence of micrographia and in three points recall she could only recall two points. There was no behavior abnormality, speech was dysrhetoric, able to understand, uh, read and write sentences. Cranial nerve examination, olfaction was normal in both nostrils, optic nerve, optic nerve uh, visual acuity 6 by 6 in both eyes as checked by stellar chart. There was no visual field effect as checked by confrontation method, color vision was normal, light reflex direct and indirect was present, there was uh, fundus examination was done to rule out diabetic retinopathy, uh, she had no abnormality detected on that as well. Ocular motor nerve, trochlear nerve and abducin nerve, there was no tosses, extraocular uh, muscle movement was normal in all direction, bilateral pupil were normal in size, reactive to light, accommodation reflex was present. Trigeminal nerve, uh, corneal and conjunctival reflex present, Georgia was absent, sensation over the face were intact. Facial nerve, intact wrinkling of the forehead and eye closure, normal laser navial fold and angle of mouth, though blowing, whistling and showing the teeth couldn't be examined. Tate sensation was normal, vestibular cochlear nerve was intact, glossopharyngeal nerve and vagus nerve, gag reflex was present, spinal accessory, spinal part was intact. Hypoglossal nerve, there was no fasciculations or abnormal tongue movement. Coming onto the motor system, muscle bulk was bilateral equal, muscle tone was increased in the right upper limb, rigidity 
type uh, rigidity was present which was cogwheel type power was 555 in all uh, the four limbs coordination bilateral was normal in describing the involuntary movement now the involuntary movement which are present in the finger of the right hand was arrhythmical repetitive purposeless appears at rest increases on excitement and getting emotional non suppressible not altered by eye closure disappeared during sleep however there was no change in approaching an object coming on to reflexes superficial reflexes abdominal reflex was present bilateral plantar was flexor uh, bicep tricep supinator knee and ankle in both the right and the upper limb was 2 plus sensory system all sensations were intact cerebellar signs were intact gait there was my slowness in getting up from sitting freezing was noted on initiation with reduced step length and arm swing more on the right than left with some distal choreoform movements in the right upper limb the base was normal though the cranium and the spine and meninges were within normal limit the extra pyramidal signs she had mildly reduced facial expressions with a staring look blink rate was reduced cogwheel rigidity was more on the right side and hence the bradykinesia was also present on the right side mild perioral dyskinesia with lips smacking with jaw dyskinesia distal choreoform movements were noticed in the right hand cvs uh, s1 and s2 were audible there was uh, no murmur uh, respiratory system bilateral air entry was present there was no added sounds git there was no palpable organomegaly uh, on cell lamb examination no ks was seen now i would like to invite dr madhulata agarwal ma'am associate a professor from the medicine department to summarize the clinical finding reach a physical diagnosis and thus uh, uh, come to certain dds this is the case presented to summarize we have a 53 year old hindu married female who presented to us with 10 long year history of gradually progressive insidious onset abnormal body movements Uh, localized to the oral cavity and uh, to the jaw as well as to the right half of her body with partial lung seizures with a clinical finding with a clinical finding of uh, perioral uh, jaw dyskinesia slurred speech coliform movements in fingers of right hand bradykinesia which was more on the right Uh, with associated cogwheel rigidity and freezing while initiation of movement with decreased expressions over her face and decreased blink rate psychiatric symptoms in the form of irritability and anger outbursts were seen and she had mild cognitive impairment so the physical diagnosis insidious onset gradually progressive orobuccal dyskinesia with right distal choreoform movements with dysarthria with bradykinesia and cogwheel rigidity suggestive of extra pyramidal tract involvement with mild cognitive impairment and few psychiatric symptoms clinical findings suggest a movement disorder associated with neurodegenerative changes of long duration with a gradually progressive course so now any uh, takes on this yes ma'am any more yes yes sir yes sir any more first thing come to mind is parkinson yes yes sir yes sir that also can be a possibility so uh, and this uh, and yes yes yeah uh, but there was no history of medication uh, of course we still have to rule it out anybody else from post graduates so let's see huntington's as suggested wilson's of course neuro degeneration uh, disorders associated with brain iron accumulation which is a broad category one among them is uh, uh, what sir suggested huntington like disease and part of uh, neurocanthocytosis what ma'am suggested and atypical parkinsons or parkinsons disorder so now we will go on to investigating this patient to establish what the diagnosis could be and who is right let's see So I welcome uh, Dr. Ishita Bhat to discuss the investigations. Now coming on the investigation, uh, the hemogram that is the CBC.
uh, the hemogram that is the CBC, her hemoglobin TLC count as well as the platelet were within normal limit. The PBF uh, showed no acanthocytes, so which rules out neuroacanthocytosis. And it has to be at least more than 20% on the PBF to say this. The sample should be freshly collected and it should not be sent in the EDTA while otherwise it could be misdiagnosed. Uh, on uh, further, her um, OTPT, as that is the LFT, was within normal limit. Her uh, RFT was within normal, uh, normal limit. The serum calcium was 9.92, which was again normal. 24-hour urine copper level 0.4 was almost normal, which again rules out Wilson's disease. And her serum seromoplasmin, that is 3.2, was also normal. The blood sugar was well controlled. The viral markers were negative. Ferritin was 95.6, again normal. The chest X-ray, USG, 2D uh, echo were also with the normal limits. There was no abnormality detected on them. The urine routine microscopic examination revealed no abnormality. The ECG was normal sinus rhythm as depicted in the pic. Now, I would like to invite Madhulata ma'am for discussing the differential diagnosis. So, we will move on to the differential. Now the investigation and uh, everything is in front of you. So Huntington's was ruled out. Huntington's was ruled out one because uh, it, uh, there was no family history. Uh, because, since it's an autosomal dominant disorder, a family history has to be there, and she had no history of such similar illness in the family. And Wilson's, as you could see in the investigation, serum copper levels were uh, normal. Then uh, the 24-hour urinary copper excretion was normal. And the ceruloplasmin levels were also normal. And uh, there was no KF ring on slit lamp examination, as you would have seen in the examination part. So uh, next, coming on to the neurodegeneration associated with brain iron accumulation, the age of onset. Most of these disorders are inherited disorders and they have an early age of onset except for a few atypical cases. And neuroacanthocytosis as suggested by mom, but there was no acanthocyte seen on PBF. Uh, coming to tardive dyskinesias or medication associated, but there was no history of use of any such drugs, whether antipsychotics or non-psychotic drugs. Then coming on to atypical Parkinson's, uh, the uh, uh, points that go against atypical Parkinson's are uh, one is the, pro the progression is very slow and there are no associated non-motor features like REM sleep disorder, constipation and osmia. And the initial presentation was in the form of coriform movements which again goes against it. And the other most probable which we could think of was uh, though rare atypical pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. So actually points that go in favor are one is uh, the late age of uh, uh, onset that is at 53, uh, 43 years of age and the prolonged course, the prolonged uh, slow course uh, with psychiatric and cognitive decline. So now I will request our uh, radio diagnosis department to discuss the imaging part which will help us arrive at the conclusion. I request Dr. Parul Gupta, ma'am, to come. Good afternoon, everyone. So, as per the American College of Physiology associates this criteria, any patient who presents with movement disorder is subjected to MRI without contrast. CT has got no role except in acute cases, but that's not the case uh, in the present scenario. So what we see here is that besides looking at the overall picture, we see that there is no generalized atrophy or white matter changes, but a very peculiar finding that we see here in the globus pallidae. Now this is again eye of tiger sign, whereby we see increased iron deposition, which is seen as hypo intensity on a T2 weighted image with a central Hyperintensity that occurs due to spongiosis and neurodegeneration due to increased iron accumulation. So, is the eye of tiger sign diagnostic? No, we have a list of differentials in this. So, coming to the most classical association that is the pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration. But as already discussed, this happens predominantly in the first or second decade, which is the classical form. Then we are ruling out Wilson's disease. 
one on the clinical basis the age is not matching but of course there are cases where the patient may present at a later age second the investigations were not corroborated and third radiologically a patient with wilson disease may have this eye of tiger's appearance but additionally we have to see some uh, sort of putaminal hyperintensity which is not seen in this case additional findings may also be seen in the brain stem in the form of certain signs the main being the face of giant panda sign or the cub of panda sign appearance which was not not the case in this now coming to atypical parkinsons which is uh, which should be considered in this case considering that the patient also had bradykinesia as well as uh, some sort of dystonia among those that fits the criteria would be the multi system atrophy that was not the case in this because in msa we expect some sort of pontine uh, atrophy with a hot cross bun sign which is not seen in this case so this is also ruled out coming to organophosphate and carbon uh, monoxide intoxication these have to be acute presentation and history has to be forthcoming which is not the case in this so we are left with only pcan but it is not fitting in a classical scenario a few salient points about eye of the tiger sign is that this sign in cases of uh, pcan would only be seen if there is a pan2 mutation there may be certain subset of patients of pcan who do not have pan2 mutation and in those cases we will not have this eye of tiger sign this sign is also not found with other types of neurodegenerative diseases with brain iron accumulation which will be subsequently discussed and as already mentioned no white matter changes or atrophy is seen but one thing that we have to know is that this sign is not classically seen at all ages in the same patient to begin with in childhood we would just see hyper intensity in the globus pallidae only when the patient reaches in the second decade we see increased iron deposition that is seen as hypo intensity on t2 also in adults only uh, sometimes the central hypo intensity also can be lost and that happens because of increased iron accumulation and in such cases we see for other signs of increased iron deposition that would be in the substantia nigra an internal reference in all such cases is kept with the red nucleus red nucleus is the only area which should show increased iron deposition as per age but if we see increased hypo intensity uh, in increasing hypo with respect to red nucleus then we label it as increased iron accumulation so with this uh, i'd like to invite dr madhu for further discussion the imaging and the reporting from our uh, radio diagnostic colleagues we were able to arrive at a conclusion that the problem of the case of neurodegeneration associated with vein iron accumulation and this most likely was a case of atypical pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration now why are we calling it atypical and not typical uh, it must be very evident from the age uh, the age of the patient doesn't favor classical Uh, the age of onset was very late, forty-three, almost the fourth decade. And usually, uh, it, uh, the classical pcan occurs in the first decade of life. And by the second decade, the patients become non-ambulatory because of the dystonias and the extra pyramidal symptoms that they have. And uh, it is also associated with retinitis uh, pigmentosa. And uh, why we are favoring atypical again is because initially there is psychiatric and cognitive decline followed by gait impairment. and uh, the progression the progression is very rapid in cases of classical pcan as i told you that by the second decade they almost become non ambulatory uh, non ambulatory whereas in atypical it is a very slow progression the only common thing between the two is the eye of tiger sign as was already discussed by our uh, radiology colleagues so now to have a further insight into what are these neuro degeneration uh, degeneration associated with brain iron accumulation i invite dr dipali sharma from department of neurology to discuss it good afternoon everyone and thank you for giving me this opportunity and representing the neuro department 
basically this neurodegeneration with iron accumulation uh, neurodegeneration with iron accumulation these are a group of rare devastating and inherited neurological disorders which comprise a spectrum of movement disorder then we have the cognition decline and then the motor decline with commonest feature being the iron accumulation in the basal ganglia now let's look into these individually so all the nbi disorders are basically iron deposition in globus pallidus but they differ because of their co-occurrence of other findings and till now the 10 dif uh, on the basis of the genes 10 different types of nbia spectrum have been found uh, so i will be categorizing it from infantile to the adult onset so infantile the most common is the bpan which is known as the beta propeller protein associated neurodegeneration it has these uh, disorders have a spectrum like if they are presenting in infants they will be presenting with most common seizure, especially the BPAN. BPAN will present with seizures and they can be easily uh, misdiagnosed as West syndrome, as LGS. So we have to be careful about them and because as West syndrome will ultimately progress to LGS and they will have a different altogether uh, the prognosis, whereas this beta propeller a protein associated neurodegeneration will have a different prognosis so one has to look into this not only we will find these symptoms they will also be having in uh, neuro uh, they will not be having the normal development like the motor milestones the language milestones will not be achieved and uh, by the age of 10 to 12 years they will become bed bound however if this is a late onset like in the juvenile case it present it is basically it will basically present as a ataxic gait ataxic uh, gait changes with dysarthria again with movement disorder in the form of bradykinesia and ultimately going to the bed bound state now among all these nbi spectrum this is the only one which is x linked all of other disorders are autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive it is the only disorder which is x linked dominant so in this cases you will only be seeing the female patients so whenever a female young uh, infantile female with seizure with neuroregression or with, uh, which is not uh, they are not achieving their milestones one should definitely look for the bpan then second one is the uh, the second uh, uh, um, disorder which comes is in the third to fourth year of life is the pentothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration which i will be dis discussing detail later on then the third uh, which we come across is the pla a2 g6 associated neurodegeneration which is known as the plan it is an autosomal recessive inheritance basically it also has a spectrum uh, ranging from infantile to the adult onset infantile is known as the infantile exonal neurodystrophy which will uh, this peculiar type of disorder uh, is having one thing common is that it is having hypotonia as the presentation where all other spectrum will have a hypotonia so whenever a patient of uh, in sixth seventh age of life comes to you like uh, extra pyramid dystonia uh, with parkinson features with coriform movement if you are finding hypotonia then your mind should definitely think about inat and uh, it is again a rapidly progressive disorder and patient becomes bed bound then the next spectrum in this is the atypical inad which has again a, a later year of a later age of presentation like in the juvenile form it can present again similar dystonia parkinson will be the major presentation with hypotonia again we have to keep in mind if hypotonia comes one should definitely think about the plan and then the uh, last form that is the parkinson dystonia form which presents in the adult and the usual age of onset is around in the third decade and uh, they are very good responsive to lipodopa candidopa so whenever a patient young patient comes of a movement disorder always a trial of lipodopa and carbidopa should be given because you may you may never know that it may respond and this is one such entity which responds to the lipodopa carbidopa then uh, third we have fourth we have is the mitochondrial membrane protein associated neurodegeneration which is known as the mpan again it is a uh, it can be inherited both ways autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant the clinical features are overlapping in all the syndromes neuroimaging and the genetic test will help to differentiate all the entities in mpan the child with present with uh, dystonias with pyramidal signs with neuropsychiatric features with cognitive decline and uh, one 
all these will have the similar phenotypes what will help us to differentiate is the neuroimaging like in the b pan the neuroimaging all of these are neuroiron accumulation so definitely basal ganglia is the most commonest site where it will get affected so in b pan we will have substantial nigra involvement more than the globus pallidus involvement such that the t2 weighted images will show hypodensity whereas the t1 image will show a surrounding rim of hyper intensity in cases of b pan in cases of pla a2 basically uh, it will present with cerebellar atrophy just only finding will be cerebellar atrophy with some hypo intensity but cerebellar atrophy is the hallmark of this disorder then m pan m pan has a striking mri feature such that in the t2 weighted images when you will see uh, there is a linear hyper intense line between the gpe that is the gpe uh, globus pallidus externa and interna so this will help us to differentiate and rest of the disorders are very very rare but like this case was a adult onset so two main differential diagnoses which i would like to keep in the spectrum of nvia will be the neuroferritinopathy and the acerulopalasminemia so few words about those uh, disorders neuroferritinopathy basically is due to the mutation in the fhl gene which is required in the uh, iron metabolism so these patients will have syndrome of they will basically present as a adult case of moment disorder with oromandibular dystonia with dysarthrophonia and with action specific facial dystonia so whenever these three spectrum comes you will directly think about the neuroferritinopathy and uh, the uh, when we will do the workup the ferritin level will be very low and next coming to the acerulopalasminemia again these are adult onset nbi spectrum there and it is the only disorder which is autosomal dominant however it is having very rare occurrence and whenever the patient will come it will be presenting in his 40s or 50s decade of life moment disorder again will be the uh, hallmark feature and if it is presenting with diabetes with anemia and retinal degeneration with a moment disorder in 40s or in their 50s decade one should definitely consider a cerebroplasminemia in this we will have decreased cerebroplasmin level however the ferritin levels will be very high it is ranging from Three times to forty times. So, like this, you can differentiate between the acerulopalasmin and the neuroferritinopathies. Now, coming to the PCAN. So, it is autosomal recessive, major form of NBI, accounting for the fifty percent of the childhood NBIs. It also has two spectrum. One is the typical spectrum, and the second is the atypical spectrum. The typical spectrum age of onset is ninety percent of the patients should present before the six years of age, and the sim uh, the onset will be focal dystonia. or the gait impairment because of the spasticity and rigidity but if a patient of protruded tongue dystonia comes before the age of 6 years one should definitely look out for pcan because that is the hallmark of this disorder and it has other extrapyramidal involvement in the form of rigidity parkinsons and it starts basically in the oro uh, mandibular region and then later on generalizes the pyramidal tract involvement can be seen in the form of human signs in the form of hyperintensity hyperreflexia and spasticity and multi systemic involvement is seen like i should always be looked in for the changes of retin pigmentary retinopathy and these usually have a very rapid course within 10 to 12 years they become bad bound and also there is cognitive decline neurological deterioration with loss of motor skills now what is the cause of death in these patients the most common causes which are identified are secondary to cardiopulmonary complication complication from malnutrition and a very rare and very severe and devastating is the status dystonicus as already mentioned what are the differences between the typical pcan and the atypical pcan so when you should suspect that this pcan is not a typical one or a atypical like the age of onset Uh, these are basically genetically proven cases where they had a moment disorder as the prime manifestation, and on MRI they found out the high of tiger. So uh, basically, this was on the basis of genetic analysis only. These uh, patients usually present in their third or fourth decade, and they will have focal dystonias like in the hands or in the oromandibular region. However, neuropsychiatric and cognitive features are the predominant features. They always so they always uh, they are more as compared to the focal dystonias and they have have they will have a very slow progression such that over a period of 10 to 40 years they will become bed bound whereas a classical case of pcan will become bed bound by 10 to 12 years and they can have this eye of tiger sign in the neuro a neuro imaging and the genes which are responsible for this is also uh, for typical pcan is also seen in atypical pcan 
Now, why this uh, neurobrain ion accumulation is affecting the basal ganglia? This is because of a specific protein that is, a specific gene or protein that is pant2 that is pantothenate kinase. As we already know, basal ganglia is a neuro is a neuro uh, is a very metabolically active site. So there is always ongoing procedures going on, and with the aging also we see some mineral deposition. However, because of defect of this gene, uh, there are certain transcriptional protein modifications leading to transferrin protein receptor defect such that it accumulates iron despite having iron load. And also one theory supports that, that the ferroptosis, which is the normal pathological process of cell dying, is also, inter is also hampered such that leading to more iron accumulation. And uh, globally this mutation that is C1561 G more than E, that is aspartic acid more than as asparagine more than aspartic acid has been seen. Now, one question also arises in our mind: Why uh, the pecan has a two spectrum? One is typical, and another one is atypical because of this mutation. If it is a typical uh, pecan, it will present with the homozygous null mutation. However, if it is a atypical pecan, it will present with missense mutation. That means atypical pecan will have some amount of normal gene to carry out the further process of forming coenzyme A. However, if it is not there, it will not form. Thank you. Okay. And uh, very few case reports are there and thus this is a very rare case and in India, uh, the last case series was from the Nimhans where they reported 24 patients of typical PCAN where uh, like, the, uh, his, uh, like the previous case reports were there walking difficulty was the most common presenting symptoms with dystonia being the most common extrapyramidal symptom with retinitis pigmentosa found in 37.5 percent of patients with uh, eye of tiger sign in the neuroradiology with biallelic variants in the pan 2 gene mutations were seen so this is about the pecan So currently there are no disease modifying treatment for any form of neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation. The treatment only remains supportive and palliative. Neo advances in the treatment of NBIA is um, uh, you can start. There are four broad based approach. First is iron chelation to treat iron deposits since there is excess iron accumulation. Metabolite supplementation to restore the metabolite deficits in the coenzyme A pathway such as coenzyme A and cyclic PPPA. PAN3 activation and gene therapy. Uh, the new advances again are focused on gene therapy, stem cells as well as deep brain stimulation uh, for the people with intractable dystonias. Now I would like to in, uh, invite Dr. Mukta Meel from Patho Department to discuss the pathophysiology uh, involved in this. Good afternoon everyone, myself Dr. Mukta, Associate Professor in the Department of Pathology. Now coming on the topic neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation, as my colleagues have already described that it is a clinical radiological entity in which there is a progressive neurological deterioration occur in the patient. Originally it is described and grouped based on the post-mortem iron accumulation of the in the brain which is identified grossly as the discoloration of the pallidum and microscopically by the using pulse stain. Till date, 15 distinct monogenetic disease entities have been identified in this category. The, first mo the four most common forms are PKN, PLAN, BPN and the MPN as it is discussed previously. Now, coming on the pathophysiology, it is heterogeneous. Normally, the iron accumulation, accumulation is recognized as the co rec common normally part of the aging process as well as observed in the different neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So, in these diseases, the distribution of the excess iron Accumulation equals the normal resident distribution of the iron within the brain and affected most common parts are globus pallidus, red nucleus, putamen, substantia nigra and the caudate nucleus. So in these disorders, dysfunction in the several pathophysiological pathways get affected. The most important in the PKN is the coenzyme A biosynthesis. Usually in the mitochondria, pentothenate get converted in the, into the coenzyme A. This coenzyme A cannot be synthesized in the, in the absence of 
pen 2 mutations so decreased level of the pen 2 mutations causes decreased synthesis of the coenzyme coenzyme is required for the transferase receptor mediated endocytosis of the iron when the mutations occur decreased level of coenzyme the transferring receptor cannot get the permutation this leads to in excess of the iron accumulation in the cell on coming to the histopathology when we see the slides there is the rarefaction of the neuropil which is demonstrated by the iron deposition iron deposition in the affected area by the pulse stain and in this diseases there occurs the neuronal as well as myelin loss myelin loss can be demonstrated by the different by the myelin basic protein on the immunohistochemistry as well as axonal loss can be identified by the phosphorylated phosphorylated neurofilament protein on when we see the slides on high power we will see that there will be axonal swelling as well as neuronal loss and pre presence of this multiple variable size eosinophilic homogeneous as well as granular bodies called the spheroid bodies these axonal loss and spheroid bodies can be identified by different immunohistochemical stains such as ubiquitin phosphorylated neurofilament protein as well as amyloid associated protein in these neurodegenerative disorders neurofibrillary tangles can also be identified which is demonstrated by the tau protein as well as gali silver impregnation method thank you now i would like to invite dr madhulata for the questionnaire session so now coming to the interesting part of the cpc so let me tell you one thing that the diagnostic process of disorders is a genetic study Uh, which is not being done in our institute presently, and like genome is the only one where we can do the study. But cost factor is a big hindrance. Uh, the exo, uh, if you do a complete sequencing, then it costs almost around sixteen thousand, so it's pretty expensive. So hence, in our patient also, we could not do the genetic study. Uh, so now coming to the question answer session. The first question: Huntington's chorea is characterized clinically with all of the following except. autosomal dominant disorder associated with phenomena of anticipation the most predominant areas of the brain involved are caudate nucleus and putamen in younger patients approximately 10% cases it presents as akinetic rigid parkinson syndrome classical feature is a wing beat tremor so anyone for the take uh, i want post graduates to answer <laughs> and please uh, raise your hand yeah uh, go ahead i uh, tell your name no my <laughs> what's the answer yeah d is the answer the classical feature is not a wing beat tremor wing beat tremor is a classical feature of wilson's disease so of course it is a autosomal dominant disorder with anticipation and uh, the juvenile variant is called the westphal variant and wing beat tremor is classical of wilson's so next question all are true about wilson's disease except Autosomal recessive disorder of copper metabolism due to mutation in ATP7B gene. KF ring is present in all cases of hepatic involvement, but only in 50% cases of psychiatric manifestation. Liver biopsy is diagnostic. Onset is in second decade of life with rigidity, tremor, and dystonia. Uh, <laughs> Residents, please stand one of you and just give an answer. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, KF ring is seen mainly in uh, neurological manifestations and not in hepatic. So that's the answer. Uh, liver biopsy uh, is diagnostic, uh, not always, uh, <laughs> but it is uh, of course uh, diagnostic when the dry weight of copper is more than two fifty microgram. Uh, okay, the next question: Chorea acanthocytosis or neuroacanthocytosis is defined by following clinical features except. Uh, mean age of onset is 35 years and disease is progressive repetitive tongue protrusion called feeding dystonia lead to cachexia peripheral neuropathy is absent associated with self mutilation residents i uh, know not the same person again someone else ha huh, apart from neurology <laughs> medicine anyone anyone just okay so then it goes to neurology see yeah <laughs> peripheral neuropathy is present it is not absent 
So uh, it is a rare disorder, again autosomal recessive and lot has been spoken about it. So uh, mainly diagnosed by peripheral blood smear showing acanthocytosis more than 20%. So which amongst the following is essential for removal of excess unused iron from the brain cells? This is just to uh, give a hint of importance regarding iron metabolism in brain. So any takes? Nobody? Again, goes to neuro or maybe patho? Maybe patho? No takes? Nobody? Okay, so it is celluloplasmin. It is the one that is why in acelluloplasminemia we have iron deposition. So which is the most accurate statement regarding NBIA? So much has been told. So which is the most accurate? It's a heterogeneous group of disorders associated with iron overload. The predominant symptoms are due to deposition of iron in cortical and subcortical areas. They are rare genetic disorders with a prevalence of 1 to 3 million globally. The most common type is PLAN. So any takes for this? Yeah, C is the answer. Actually, they are not associated with iron overload and the deposition is mainly in the basal ganglia. So uh, C is the answer and PCAN is the most common. So all of the following are spectrum of neurodegenerative disorders of brain uh, associated with iron accumulation which are autosomal recessive except there's only one. So the answer is B, neuroferritinopathy. Rest of all are autosomal recessive. Which of the following statements about atypical pantothenate kinase deficiency is false? Onset is in the first three decades of life. Progression is slower and presenting features are distinct with speech involvement being the first and sometimes the sole presentation. Psychiatric symptoms include personality changes as we had in our case. Genetic and phenotypic correlation is always well established. Anyone? So D is the answer. It is not always well established. You might not get the genetic and phenotypical correlation always. Now, a 16-year-old boy presents with staring spells with dystonia and diminished reflexes with rigidity in all four limbs. Slit lamp examination for KF ring was negative. All his routine hematological and biochemistry findings were normal. A preliminary diagnosis of PCAN is suspected. Which amongst the following is a classical MRI finding? So much has been said. I have tiger sign. Now this question was to just uh, make you familiar with what is face of panda sign. Uh, there is high intensity lesion in basal ganglia, thalami and midbrain with normal to low intensity of red nuclei substantia nigra giving this eye of panda sign which is a feature of uh, Wilson's. So molar tooth sign. Uh, this is a rare disorder associated with cerebellar vagina and degeneration. Leopard skin sign where you see stripes of white matter degeneration uh, appearing like a leopard skin. It is seen in uh, metachromatic leukodystrophy. So now this question. Tardive dyskinesia is typically caused by older antipsychotic agents. However, other drugs may also be responsible. Which of the following non-antipsychotic medications have demonstrated the strongest association? Metachromat is the right answer. So, anti-emetic metaprobromide is a potent D2 receptor antagonist, hence it is responsible. Which of these statements is most accurate regarding dystonias? Wilson's disease and lipid storage disorders are recognized secondary causes of dystonia. Cranial dystonia and oromandibular dystonia are the most common forms of focal dystonia. Genetic screening for DYT gene abnormality is recommended in patients with onset of dystonia below the age of 16. Intrathecal baclofen is contraindicated in patients with dystonia who have spasticity. Anyone? So the answer is B. Cranial dystonias are the most common, 50% of cases. So that is the answer. Now take home message. Early diagnosis in movement disorders with neurodegeneration will improve prognosis and aid in genetic testing of the proband and counseling for prevention and progeny. Spectrum of movement disorders associated with brain iron accumulation labeled as NBIA have received a new limelight with development of better techniques of MR imaging. Understanding of these disorders have also opened new areas for research in understanding iron metabolism in health and disease of the CNS. Better understanding of pathology underlying spectrum of these disorders has paved way for newer treatment approaches. 
So the upcoming CPC is on 19th of October 2023 by the Department of Pediatrics. Thank you all. Thank you all for the patience here.